Hey everybody, it's Preacher. Today we're asking that question, should you roll, Paladin? The guides are out now for your basic get going. I can start enjoying this class in all its different aspects. But the question ultimately is, should you give it a try in the first place if you don't have one? What do I think is going to happen to it in the future, judging by what the way the wind is blowing right now? Unlike our previous should you roll, this is the first one that has access to all three different roles. We can be a tank, a DPS, or a healer. Many people like to pick a class because they want to be a certain spec. They don't choose a paladin. They choose a prop paladin, a rep paladin, a holy paladin, whatever it might be. And in that I say, take with a pinch of salt. If this is something you plan on raiding on and doing more with than just some casual content, be aware that when you are the guy and your guild master or your raid leader says to you, can you heal tonight if you're a rep paladin, and you're the guy who says no, always bear in mind that your raid leader or GM will remember that. And when you pick up a class... You are picking up a class, and bear in mind that you should be able to play all specs. You might not have to do it a lot, you might never have to do it, but it's always worth knowing that you have the options to be a better raider than the guy who says no. Alright, so something to bear in mind. So without further ado, we'll talk about them individually, then I'll do a bit of a conclusion, and then we'll talk about what might happen in the future. So let's start with the obvious. Let's start with the rep pally. In all the guides, I call it crazy silly fun, and it is. It's just crazy silly fun with... All these procs going on that are procking off each other and our set bonuses that are coming with the release of the Black Rock Foundry are just going to make that more pronounced. More and more pronounced. I called it just, I kept saying it was silly. Very silly. And it does feel silly. It feels like a circus. And I said it feels like a roller coaster that you're just trying to hold on to. And it very much is that now. Now that's come with some certain problems with the Rat Paladin. They're doing great right now. Absolutely fantastic. They do rely a little bit on RNG sometimes. You can have moments of absolute clarity when all your procs work in your favor and you can dominate certain areas. And over the course of a full boss fight, that tends not to be an issue anyway as everything evens out. Which means at the moment, the Rep Paladin is in a great place. Really nice. It not only brings huge support in the terms of hands for those players who are capable of throwing out sacrifices, hops and freedoms, but also provides some off healing, some lay on hands action, the ability to bubble and survive certain things and great mitigation for that magical damage on a very short cooldown. We have great choice amongst the talents. We do. Whether or not you like or you're with me and Team Empowered Seal sucks doesn't matter because they're still viable if you want to try it out. You could try out different things like Holy Avenger and mix that with Seraphim or Go Final Verdict mixed with Sanctified Wrath. It doesn't matter too much. In fact, you can check out many threads who are mixing and matching their talents to decide which boss favors what, which means different play styles, always keeping the spec interesting. I find that super important with any DPS spec when you're tunneling and progressing a boss is that you get to change it out and try something a little bit different it's not as if you can change spec you can't go dpsing as prot anymore or dpsing as holy obviously so it's always nice to see that that variation exists so what are the problems blizzard has a real issue with trying to make sure paladins don't end up like warriors they don't want their play styles to be play style to be too similar in that respect paladins often fall into a problem which is that they become very very bursty and that's a problem right now and in order to fix that, Blizzard has to look at a way of not nerfing their damage, because their damage is fine, but making it more consistent and smoother, so that people can deal with a Paladin and not suddenly end up buried in the ground, usually due to PvP problems. In PvE, we don't really care if someone has huge burst every now and again. It doesn't matter to us, we can use that to our advantage. But of course, in WoW, we have to balance things around PvP as well. It happens, it happens. So Paladins runs that issue. What I fear with the Rep Paladin is that sometimes it may, in fact, end up being nerfed, in various abilities nerfed, so that all the buttons don't really matter. As it is a silly spec, what do I mean by that? I mean it has far too many buttons in terms of doing damage than it needs. There's no reason that Hammer of, Hammer of, uh, Hammer of the Righteous exists. It doesn't need to exist when we have a finisher in the form of Divine Storm. We don't need to be picking and choosing. We don't need two seals to be switching around when we AoE. In fact, we don't need to be changing our entire playstyle just depending on how many mobs are still in front of us. A classic problem encountered in Mists of Pandaria. However, I would say, without predicting too much until we get to our future predictions, that for right now, the Rep Paladin looks pretty good. There are certainly nerfs on the way, uh, in terms of getting rid of this burst potential, but if you're looking for something crazy and silly and just having a little bit of a melee bash around while you've got some survivability on top of that and bringing some utility that you can work on in the future, the Rat Paladin is a pretty good start. One thing we can say is it's not boring. It's not boring for now.
the Holy Paladin. The Holy Paladin is the one of the three specs that I have a genuine problem with. I had a problem with it in the alpha, I had a problem with it in the beta, and they did nothing to solve it. And if someone was to ask me they want to start healing, is the Holy Paladin a way to go? I would probably say no. And the reason for that is I find that spec to be particularly dull. And I often feel when I play my Holy Paladin after playing, say, any of my other healing specs, is that I feel like a light well. <clears throat> and I find it very difficult to not feel that way. The issue I always have with the Holy Paladin is there is not much in the way of variety in terms of the buttons you're pressing. If you look at compared to a Holy Priest where every single button does something completely different, the Holy Paladin, not so much. They also have this problem of their Holy Power finishers, and we call them a finisher, and you compare that to things like League of Legends, or even just the Rep Paladin's finishers or a Prop Paladin's finishers, which all matter and do something important and fun. Holy Paladin finishers don't feel many, much different to the Holy Power Generators, which means reaching a Holy Power number in order to use one of our finishers actually results in nothing in terms of interesting gameplay. I think that is the biggest downside of the Holy Paladin. When I play it, it's hard to just not feel like a turret. I'm either pressing Holy Light, Flash of Light, or I'm pressing Eternal Flame, or Word of Glory, and all those four spells are pretty much exactly the same. There's no difference, there's barely any difference in cast time, really, and that's so disappointing to see. And it's similar with AoE, you can say things like, well, Holy Radiance, great spell. Well, it's not, we don't really even use it anymore because of mana, ultimately that probably will work itself out. But then our finisher for AoE is Light of Dawn, and Light of Dawn, despite having a little bit of fancy graphics, feels exactly the same as a Holy Radiance. And that really bogs me down. It bogs me down that they're such a... Some people would call it niche. I say one-dimensional. I don't think it's niche at all. I think it's, in fact, very boring. I think they're hanging on by a lifeline with their power to absorb in certain encounters in Mythic. And the fact that if we look back historically, we can remember that towards the end of TBC, uh, or Wrath of the Lich King, I should say, Holy Paladins were very, very, very angry at Beacon of Faith. They were very angry at it. They were very angry that it was just such a, an obvious thing to bring to a raid that was really boring. I have this one spell that I cast. It duplicates my heals without me doing much of anything else other than what I was already doing. And it's a vital part of the raid and it's boring. So then when they brought in the extra beacon, which is kind of mandatory these days. It, there are some uses for the other spells, but it's kind of mandatory to bring in the next beacon. It's hard to see how Blizzard ended up on this. It seems like a class that's a spec that's really run out of ideas for me. And ultimately I end up just lost that every other healer feels more fun. Does it put out the same HPS? Maybe not. Maybe not. But ultimately, if HPS is all you're going for, I don't know. I, I, it's nice to have high HPS all the time and be winning the meters and all this kind of stuff. But healing just doesn't work that way. Healing's about synergizing well with your compadres and making a good team effort. That's what the healing niche is in terms of a role. And ultimately, wh whatever produces those HPS, I would like more choice. I would like to decide, am I doing something interesting like Riptide Chain Heal? Or am I doing some sort of hasted, swift-mended wild growth in comparison to whether or not I'm pressing Holy Light or not? And in those situations, the Holy Paladin just feels really sad to me. It does. I know some people absolutely adore this spec and still like it. I just can't see it. I know what else is out there and everything else for me. I mean, literally everything else in terms of healing feels way more fun. I just can't understand right now. Now, I know this comes across as bad for some guys who love the Holy Paladin. I can't understand how one can enjoy that for a prolonged period of raiding time. I really can't. I feel like a light well. I feel like I'm just a turret with a couple of options of spells. Just because those couple of options are spread across eight buttons doesn't really matter when they all seem and look and feel exactly the same. And that makes me really sad. The prop pally. My good, the prop pally. Should you roll a prop pally? Well, if you've got aspirations of one day being the big beefy tank, absolutely you should try a prop paladin. Absolutely. They are one of the most user-friendly tanks in the game. They don't require months and months of learning and tweaking and figuring out exactly when to do this and when to do that or which spell is better here or there because frankly they don't have those choices. And for a new player, that's fantastic. 
New players want less choice when they're tanking because they're more concerned, hopefully, about things like being in the right place, tanking the right mob, absorbing the right damage, mitigating the right damage, and having less choices in ways of doing that on, the, on a more active playstyle basis is great, absolutely wonderful. The talent tree really speaks to me in terms of a new player. You have choices between things like Holy Shield, which some people will say, that's bad, don't take it. But with a recent nurse to Seraphim, some people are looking towards it, maybe this is going to be pretty good. But it doesn't matter in terms of raw numbers if you're learning the spec. What does matter is you have a decent defensive cooldown that you're not having to use. It's passive. It's doing its job whether you like it to or not. And that's wonderful. For the advanced players, there's loads of scope. And one thing I always tell tanks who are learning or are midway through learning or think they know it all is that you can never stop learning with a tank because more and more about tanking is about dealing with the encounter in an appropriate way i see tanks every single day who might play their class and their rotation their priority system absolutely fine but in terms of looking after what's important for a tank which is the raid and themselves they do that all wrong and therefore there's a big learning curve to go with there the prop paladin is in a comfortable position in fact you won't see much of anything about people complaining about the prop pallet what you'll find is people a little bit upset because their dps is being nerfed but honestly at this stage of the game this is not miss of pandaria and therefore caring about your dps as a tank should be left to the dps's and not really to the tanks it was nice to have mega dps from your tank but it's not intended so that's okay and honestly if your biggest issue in warlords is your dps you're in a pretty good place i actually think good stuff with the prop paladin i would recommend it to anybody first timers and even advanced players who are looking to get back into tanking and at least go up to a main tanking stage for the last four expansions prop paladins have been the glory every raid has wanted one how can you argue with that that's a wonderful place to be you can start off as an absolute newbie and do very very well with a prop paladin and the tools are built into the class to make your life easier you have a lot of wiggle room as a prop paladin a lot of other tanks don't have that they use their cooldown at the wrong time they could be in a mess for quite a little bit of time not really with a prop paladin you have lots of ways of making up for your mistakes and the way to push yourself is just to get better but if you're not that great you can do pretty well in a basic level and get going with things and i think that's pretty cool conclusion time should you roll a paladin for the foreseeable future i'd say yes I would only denounce it if you were looking to get into healing. I would say, nah, probably not. You'll have more fun elsewhere. For being melee DPS or going to be a tank, you're going to have a good time. I think that's the most important thing. Because if you're going to look to something you're going to play for and put some hours into, fun is the most important thing. It was only the Holy Paladin that really felt to me like it's become unoriginal, stale, and lacks any form of imagination whatsoever. Not even the power of wings and lights hammer can carry it into the fun period of time it just doesn't exist for me at the moment which is kind of sad although hand of sacrifice as we said is one of the most powerful tank cooldowns in the game absolutely awesome you are bringing that but other classes do that too and they do it in a much more stylish and interesting way for the prot and ret though pretty good pretty good lots of silly fun great damage great tanking everything you can want if you can play ret you can play prop pretty much you can get into there and start doing pretty well and start learning about different aspects of the game which is what you should be aiming aiming to do future time what do i think is going to happen in the future i kind of feel holy paladins will stay pretty much exactly as they are that is my prediction from now until the ends of the end of walls of draenor without a complete overhaul i can't see anything major happening I can see stupid things happening like reduction in mana cost of Holy Radiance. whoop de fucking do All this kind of stuff going on and maybe buffs to numbers here and there. Playstyle wise, no. I can't see it changing at all. I think they're lacking a little of inspiration there and it's going to take something pretty meaty. I think maybe the removal of Holy Power for Holy Paladins would actually be a cool thing. Or at least make it so only 5 cost but they're really exciting healing spells. Something like that might make the Holy Paladin better. I can't see it happening over the course of this expansion. I think if you play it today, it'll play pretty similar in about 8 months time. That's my prediction on that. In terms of prot, same story, but not as in a bad way. I think the prots have remained pretty consistent for the last two expansions. And I think Blizzard is very happy with how the prot paladin plays. They're looking to tweak numbers with the prot paladin. That's alright. Numbers is fine. Although they're making some tweaks to damage mitigation and all that kind of stuff. That comes with part and parcel of playing an MMO. They change on a regular basis. 
But with the prop pallies, I think they're going to be exactly the same in eight months' time as they are now, pretty much. I wouldn't expect to see anything special going on there at all. Rhett. I think Rhett is in danger. I think Rhett is in serious danger. Right now, it's crazy silly fun with hard-hitting spells, capable of mad bursts, capable of dropping dropping people to the floor, capable of just doing things that make you go, hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! That's pretty cool. That was pretty cool right there, and I couldn't have done it on anything else. But Blizzard has an issue with that. Other PvP players have an issue with that. And what could happen is we end up at the back, of, and I think this might happen, is we end up in the state it was in Mr. Pandaria. What we can never forget about Rhett is it is built on a very clunky foundation. A very clunky foundation. It might be fun with all the procs and bells and whistles going off, but on its base core, it's a very clumsily designed spec. What will happen more than likely is Blizzard will decide to nerf things like Hammer of Wrath and buff little bits into Judgment and Crusader Strike and Exorcism and try and balance those spells out. Which means the bells and whistles and the fun disappears. That goes away. What you're left with then is the basic clumsiness that lies below it, which was a big issue for me. You probably remember if you ever watched back then in Mists of Pandaria was this spec that just had so many keys to press. If I look at my bars now on a regular basis on my rep pally, I'm pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 buttons! That's not including defensive cooldowns to just get my DPS out there. That's too many. It is. It's crazy. It makes no fucking sense. You're pressing them probably every minute or so is some combination of those buttons. And it's just stupid. It really is. And at the moment, because some of them hit so hard and do crazy things... I mean, we had the joy of Final Verdict giving us 100% Divine Storm, so we were tearing instances apart. Nerfed. We have things like huge Sanctified Wrath buffs giving us incredible bursts. It's going to be balanced out. And what we're going to be left with is something that's not as fun. I think that is a real danger Rep Paladins are in in the future. And but maybe not even in six months' time. Maybe in less time than that. I think we'll be left with a rather sorry spec that used to have some glory and is now left to pretty much press whatever the hell you want. And it won't matter that much, which is a sad way to be. There's nothing sadder than a spec where people consider you rolling your face on your keyboard. And Rhett has a real danger of going there. Which is, everything hits for about the same. And therefore it doesn't matter what I'm doing. And that's never fun. People will work their ass off. You'll have guys out there doing maximum effort to try and prioritize one thing over another. Where they're pulling ahead by maybe 1 or 2%. And in that situation, it's a little bit... Uh, great i worked my ass off and didn't see much more benefit than the guys who were doing way way less than me because everything kind of hits the same right now rets have an interesting priority system that is constantly dynamic and constantly shifting and i just think that might go away i have this awful feeling in the pit of my stomach that it's so silly and so out of whack right now that it just might get taken away in favor of smoothness and smoothness when blizzard talks about smoothness means balancing all your buttons so none of them do anything pretty good but all of them do something. Yeah, that's what they're talking about. They would rather have it that all these 11, 12 keys or whatever all do something. But none of them do anything particularly great. And in that case, you fall into the Holy Paladin situation where I have access to all these tools. But all of them are a screwdriver of varying sizes. And that's not that great. Alright guys, that's my thinking. Should you roll Holy Paladin? Lots of discussion for you there. Take it easy and have a great day. Bye bye.